All right. Anyway, thank you guys for joining uh, Raw Feeding 101. I took a look at the registration list. There are a lot of new feeders, and that's very, very exciting. Uh, tonight, we're just going to talk about some basic stuff, some transition methods. I'm going to show you how to thaw, how to warm up, even feed fish. Okay, a lot of people have a lot of questions. How do you feed fish? But I will tell you this, guys. We give out so much information, so much health information every single week on the Raw Dog Food Truth podcast. And if you haven't uh, signed up for that, you know, it's totally free. It uh, alert you when we have new podcasts. We have new podcasts every single week. Go to my podcast page. We have probably, I don't know, 130 podcasts. Dr. Jasek and I have at least 55 or so um, of just health issues, uh, whether that is IBS, IBD, pancreatitis, uh, cancer, all of those issues we're going to discuss on the podcast. You can even send us questions and we will answer those on the podcast, okay? So you want to make sure you do that. Don't forget that also on our website, in the FAQ section, there are a lot of questions and answers. So if you can't get what you need via the podcast, the facts, or the blog, uh, you can always come to the webinar, but you can always get a consult from our health team. Okay. So we want to thank you so much for being a awesome pet parent for moving over into the raw diet. And there's lots of reasons why you may be coming over to the raw diet. Maybe it is that your dog has digestive issues, skin issues, allergies, uh, or maybe it's just that you want to avoid some problems in the future. Maybe it's that you saw the movie on Netflix called Pet Fooled. And if you haven't seen that, I would highly recommend that you watch that. We'll, that will explain a lot of the reasons of why we do what we do. I've been feeding raw for about 20 years and um, it is absolutely amazing to see the health and the way that pets' lives are changed through the raw diet. Um, and even though we see it every single day, we see the great things that happen um, in the raw diet, there will be many of you, let me say that, maybe there's going to be some of you. Uh, that are on the podcast or on the uh, webinar tonight that will stop feeding raw. And that is because there is this fear factor that happens. There is a concept in your head um, that is um, not helped by the traditional pet health community. Okay. And what I'm talking about is this thing called bacteria. Oh my gosh, bacteria, it's a terrible thing. Really, it is not a terrible thing. But what we hear all the time is pet parents that are super excited about the raw diet, their dogs are doing great, and they go to the vet, a vet that they love, and their vet says, I would stay away from that raw diet. Gonna make you sick, gonna make your dog sick. That bacteria, that salmonella, that listeria, that E. coli. <coughs> No. Okay, look, here's the thing, guys. You know, bacteria is a great thing. Did you know that on your body, as you sit there today or stand there today, wherever you are watching this webinar, you have trillions of bacteria on your body? Yeah, you yeah, do. Bacteria. We need bacteria. Bacteria helps us in our digestive system. It helps us. Um, with certain vitamins like and minerals, biotin, vitamin K. We have to have bacteria in the world. If we don't have bacteria, we die. If dogs don't have bacteria, they die. Many, many, much research has been done um, on sterile foods. There, there was a research recently done on guinea pigs where they were just fed a sterile food, no bacteria. And do you know what happened? All of these guinea pigs had um, 
They were malnutrition and uh, many of them died. So we have to have bacteria in the world. Bacteria is important to strengthen our immune system. Let your kids go out and play in the dirt, mom. My mom's on the call tonight. Uh, she always liked to keep us uh, pretty clean. But I say you got to go out and eat some dirt. Go out and play in the dirt. And one thing that Neely Piazza does, our top pet nutritionist, is that she really does challenge her pet's immune system. Okay, she really challenges it because when you need your immune system to fight off the toxins in the world, and gosh knows there are a ton of them today, you need to have an immune system that is strong. And if you don't have bacteria, you're going to be in trouble. If you don't have a strong immune system, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, um, I was looking at this book. There's a there's a microbiologist. Her name is Anne Mac. Mac Zulik, M-A-C-Z-U-L-A-K. She wrote a book and it's called Allies and Enemies, How the World Depends on Bacteria. Okay, and basically um, she is saying exactly what I said. And she said, exposure to bacteria, both benign and harmful, is what primes the immune system to respond to pathogenic invaders. And she said, so from that aspect, it's caused a lot of scientists to describe us as more bacteria than human. And I, and I want to say that because when you go to your vet, one of the top things that they say is, oh my gosh, your dog is going to get sick. They are going to get salmonella. They're going to get E. coli. They're going to get listeria. And then you know what they're going to do? They're going to pass it on to you. And if you have kids, you're going to lick your kids and then your kids are going to get sick. In 20 years, I have never had a dog, I've never heard of a dog, um, or seen a dog that had this type of bacteria issue, okay? And, and I would have to ask my vet, how do you train a dog to stop licking its butt, right? You got to stop licking the butt because the butt has, you know, E. coli, it has bacteria. And then that dog licks you in the face or licks your kid. Some of my, one of my young Germans, I just saw had a mouthful of poop the other night. Mouthful of poop. So I think that you guys want to really do your research if bacteria scares you because we don't feed a sterile food here at Raw Dog Food and Company. That's what HPP is all about, high pressure pasteurization. And what we know is that we are going to see a lot of immune compromised dogs in the future because we have this fear of bacteria. Um, so that is one reason that we see that people move away from the raw diet. The other thing is when people start on the raw diet, their dog's guts most of the time are in a compromised position, especially if they've been eating a kibble diet for a long period of time. And then you add to that all of the other toxins that go in from vaccines, steroids, uh, antibiotics, flea and tick, heartworm, okay? So we've got a, a really compromised gut. And what that means is that when they eat this raw diet, then they might throw up. I had someone call me today and they said, I fed my dog this blend and they threw up. So I think that that's a bad batch. I get this a lot. Uh, so let me, let me hit that two ways. So number one, if they throw up, um, probably it's because if you haven't received my raw feeding cheat sheet, I will get that for you. But if, if, if the gut is not in a position, if the pH is not in a position that it can deal with raw food, because kibble raises the pH, it doesn't lower the pH, we want the pH to be low so that they can kill any pathogenic bacteria that's overrunning uh, the system, um, then they might throw up. Maybe they can't totally digest bone because those digestive enzymes haven't turned on yet. But that doesn't mean the dog is sick. Maybe the food is too cold. Maybe they ate it too fast. There are a lot of reasons. And in the raw diet, it's just a matter of tweaking. 
Okay. The other thing is that I hear a lot from new feeders is I got this batch of food and my dog won't eat it. I think it's a bad batch. Okay. I always want to say, well, what the heck is a bad batch? What is a bad batch? If it's USDA human grade food, um, and that is bone, organ, fat, protein, and your dog doesn't like it, I want you to understand that they don't sniff out E. coli, listeria, or salmonella. Because if they did, they wouldn't eat the poop in the backyard. They wouldn't lick their butts. And they probably would have killed out their species, you know, the wolves and everything a long time ago, if that was the case. So it's not like they're sniffing it and going, oh, wow, there is something rotten in here and I don't want to eat it. Trust me, they like rotten stuff. What they're typically sniffing out is there's a type of organ they don't like in there. Maybe there's a little more organ. Maybe there's not enough fat. Maybe there's too much fat. There's all types of different reasons. But we have not seen a bad batch. And I will tell you that I know some of our veterans who will totally forget that they've left their raw food sitting in the sink for a day and a half. They feed it and the dog's fine. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do that. But what I'm saying is bad batches typically don't happen. We have to look at, did you just come from getting vaccines? You know, what's going on with the dog? Did they just get a lepto vaccine? That's a whole nother podcast, but I'm going to tell you right now, we absolutely recommend you do not give that vaccine. Um, all sorts of things that can cause a dog to not want to eat, but bad batches don't happen. All right. Those are the two things that, that cause people to leave uh, and go back to kibble. All right. The other thing is ease. How easy is it? Well, I'm just going to show you how easy it is. First of all, I want to show you how the rolls come. Okay. So when you get the raw food, they're going to come in frozen chubs. I call these chubs. Okay. This is a five pounder. This is for somebody like Amber. Amber who has, you know, several dogs and big dogs. So Amber always gets the bulk. Uh, she gets the five pound rolls. This is a two pound roll. And a lot of people want to know what's the size difference. And the, the question, and so you see what the size difference is. I mean, there's a big difference in five pounds and two pounds. Does it matter? No, it doesn't really matter. What, what that is determined by is how much space you have to store it in a freezer. I have a chest freezer out in my garage. Um, how much space do you have to store? And how many days can you keep it in the fridge? Now, I will tell you that on my website and on a lot of websites, they're going to say 48 hours, 36 hours. The truth is, raw dog food can stay in your fridge for five days. It really can, thaw for five days. Um, so the question is, if you feed a pound a day, you could take this entire one right here, thaw it out, uh, and have it in your refrigerator for five days, okay? Um, this right here is we do have a couple of one pound chubs. Um, we probably, once they're out of stock, we probably won't bring those back again, but those are the one pounders. So two pound versus five pound. All right. That's how they come. How do you thaw them out? Everybody thaws them out differently. I tell you what I do is I put them in something like this. And what I always tell my new feeders is make sure, and this one's probably a little more thawed than I would like. And I always take home the busted chubs. So, but what I suggest that my new feeders do, or all my feeders, is that you want to cut this plastic off as soon as possible. Comes my dog. She knows that sound. I want to cut that plastic off as soon as possible. Now, some people thaw on their counter. Some people thaw in their refrigerator. Okay, you have to do what you believe is the best for you. Now, what do you do after it's thawed? Well, I have a container that looks like this. Okay. This is my thawed food. Once it's thawed out, looks like that. That happens to be tripe. Oh yeah. 
That batch is smelly. Smelly chai. My dogs love it. Um, okay. So I put the thawed out chub, and no, I don't wear gloves because I've been doing this way too long. It doesn't freak me out. So I just take it, and if you will cut it off before it totally thaws out, then you won't have a bunch of messy stuff on your plastic. Now, what do I do with that plastic? Well, I don't put it in my trash can. I take a little poop bag, and I put it in there. I don't even rinse it out in my sink because that's a lot more bacteria, right, to spread around on the sink. Oh, maybe we need some bacteria, but you know what? I just don't do that. I put it in here, and then I put it in my trash can. Okay. Now, I want to tell you guys something. You see this stuff? You see this? Now, this is, I don't know if you can see it, but there's, okay, now you can see it. People think that's blood. Well, it is the ruptured cells. It's the ruptured cells that come out of the frozen food. Do not throw that away. Do not throw that away. That is where a lot of your vitamins and minerals, well, a lot of your minerals and trace minerals are. Oh, my goodness. Who's going to get this? I got two Germans sitting right here. Lazi, you let the old lady have it. Hang on, guys. So I let my dogs have that. If I have a lot of juice, then I am going to put it in the bowl. All right? It is great stuff for your dogs. Don't throw that away. All right? Don't throw that away. Now. Second thing is, you got your thawed food right here, okay? How do you feed? Well, if you have gone through our feeding chart, and remember puppies have a feeding chart and the adults have a feeding chart. Your adults are going to be right about in the middle, about 2.5% of their best body weight. What is the best body weight? It's where you look the best. This ain't my best body weight, okay? This is not. But I would tell you, the best body weight is where your dog has that figure eight, okay? We don't see any ribs, we don't see any hip bones, and we got that nice tuck in the back. That's your best dog's weight, and that is what you want to calculate from. So 2.5% of that, all righty? Uh, if your dog gets to where they're weighing too much and they look exactly the same from the front to the back, all you got to do is cut back their food a little. And when I mean a little, I mean cut back in ounces, all right? Now, you can totally eyeball it if you want to. I personally think that women tend to eyeball incorrectly, right? We would like to overfeed, just like at the dinner table. And we like to overfeed our dogs. So here's what I do. I have a stainless steel bowl, and I have a scale. And I've done this forever like this. But I have a scale. So I sit that scale down. I take my bowl and then I put it on the scale and I have to zero out the bowl. Okay, zero out the bowl. And then I know that my oldest German, Asta, my logo, she's only going to get eight ounces. So I take my shears and I just start piling it in there. Right? Boom. Eight ounces. And I'm watching my scale. Make sure you know how to read a scale. Okay? Because we have a lot of people that contact us and say, hey, I don't think this, yeah, I think I'm getting gypped on this food. And I'm like, Take a picture of your scale. I don't know how to read scale. Okay. So all you do is load it into the bowl. Okay. Now, I've talked to some of you about how do we warm that up. Super easy. And I would say I even have rubber on the bottom of this one. But all I do is I take it, I put it in the bowl. I put a little water in there. Water's good. Water's good for them, right? So it doesn't matter. And then I take it over and I sit it on my stove. And I put it on the lowest gas possible. And all I'm doing is basically taking the chill off. That's it. Taking the chill off. I'm not cooking it. There are some incidences where you may need to cook it, but I'm not cooking it. I'm just taking the chill off. And I basically, I'm just taking that food and I'm sort of smashing it down. And I'm stirring it, getting the food and rubbing it along that warm bottom. Then at that, if I'm going to add supplements, like for my old girl, who loves the green eggs with green lipid muscles for joint support. I put that in, in there, okay? I wait until after I warmed it up, okay? So do that, bada bing, bada boom, feed. That is all you have to do. That's it. Now, a lot of you call me and you want to know what to feed. What, what to feed? Not kibble. 
because the shirt says this. Friends don't let friends feed kibble, okay? So you're not going to feed kibble. And by the way, speaking of kibble, if you guys have digestive issues, poop issues, kibble is your culprit if you are mixing. Now, there are some people who say, I can mix and I don't have any problems. And I say, okay, that's fine. But when you call me and you have some issues, I'm going down the line. And here's the line. I'm going to say, are you mixing kibble? Do you have any dairy in there? How many supplements do you have? How many extra veggies? How many high glycemic fruits and veggies do you have? Um, how many um, vaccines? Again, I'm going down that line. I'm going down that line. But most often, um, and I hear it every single week, people are still getting that kibble in there. And I don't know why. You guys, kibble... Kibble, there, there ain't nothing good about kibble. I do not care if you tell me that is premium kibble. What is that? It is something that you paid a lot of money for. That is high price sugar. Man, that's like eating a voodoo donut, Austin. That's a high price donut, right? Sure tastes good, but messes me up. I'm on the potty for days. All right, so that is how you actually warm it up. All right, now, what to feed? Does not matter. Really doesn't. But I'm going to tell you the differences in the PMRs. And when you order, okay, it's going to uh, like bounce. It'll say PMR on there. Beef PMR, turkey PMR, pork PMR, chicken PMR, whatever PMR. In the catalog, it will say Prey Model Plus. Prey Model Plus. What's the plus stand for? What is that? Well, here's the thing. We developed that because it's also in the puppy category. Um, we developed that because we were seeing that people didn't really get the fact that puppies needed to have more bone in their diet. Now, it's not just for puppies. It's for all life stages, okay, because the, the adult dogs can excrete the excess calcium out to their urine. Puppies need that extra calcium, especially in that four to six month range. And people get really freaked out about giving puppies bone. Um, they're afraid they're going to choke on them. So we said, we got it. We got to do something. So these are the PMRs, higher bone, higher organ. Great model. Okay. Great model. That's the PMR plus. Your 80, 10, 10 is the original prey model okay so that's going to be something like your all-star bully your wolfram plus a lot of these have green tripe in them uh even your senior pro you guys your dog any dog can eat that what makes that senior pro are the chicken feet the the glucosamine chondroitin that's in there hey now stop the crying see that they, they hear they think they're getting fed again um okay so your lower bone your higher bone, PMR, higher bone, 80-10-10, 10 percent bone, 10 percent organ. And then you've got your BARF diet or your HBMs, which stands for healthy variety mix, which is your fruits and veggies, 10 percent in there. So it really does not matter in any of those what you decide to do or where you decide to start. I will tell you that uh, typically we will recommend um, doing both and here's why <laughs> well i'll show you why because people call me about this all the time you know what that is that's poop that's poop on a plate right there it's white it's fine this is what my dog's poop looks like all the time that doesn't mean there's too much bone although if you want to read some blogs out there that say it's not too much bone it's void of any uh preservative it is void of any uh, synthetics, it is void of fillers. And what I love about this in this toxic world of ours is this, that stuff turns like dust and you just step on it. I mean, you could and then not even pick it up. If you didn't want to run your mower right over it. But my neighbors, when they go walking by, I can tell who's pooping in my yard because their poop stays black and brown and it never seems to go away. So I have to pick that up. So but back to my point about the 80-10-10 and the PMR pluses. Some people say, well, my dog's poop, he got, he's constipated. And I say, well, how do you know? Well, he's just 
standing there. Well, sometimes they stand there and think they have to eliminate more than they really do because once they start on this raw diet, they're not going to poop that much. I mean, look, guys, this is a German shepherd's poop. That's my German shepherd's poop. And then big. Nice, isn't it? Really nice. That's one of the benefits of feeding raw. All right. But here's how you tell if your dog is constipated. If it comes out crumbly, not if it dries crumbly, comes out crumbly. Now, how do we fix that? It is super easy. Here's what you do. You rotate back and forth, get you some PMRs and get you some 801010s. For example, Turkey PMR and Wolfram Plus. Okay. Duck PMR and All Star Bully. It does, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, and go through one chub or like I do, I don't, I mean, Mine's so mixed up. I got three different blends in there. I've got tripe, I've got duck, and I've got pork. I get three different things in there. Um, but I know my dogs pretty well. But I would say um, that's all you have to do. You can put a lower bone with a higher bone. What else can you do? You can add some organs. Our organs look just like this, okay? They come in one pound rolls. And what I do with my organs, you can add extra organs if you want to loosen up the poop. I put them in a container all by themselves. And then I just do a little scoop in their food. And I'm, I watch their poops and it's pretty easy. Okay. So you've got turkey organ, duck organ, beef organ, you got all types of organs. If the poops are hard, mix the PMRs and the 801010s. Mix your HVMs and the 801010s. Okay. Or, Add a little organ. How much? Most of these blends, so your, your PMRs are going to have about 15% organ. You can add all the way up to 25%, okay? Because this is a blend. This isn't like straight liver. And that's the one that we always are looking at, liver, because it's a fat-soluble vitamin A issue, okay? But don't worry about that. As Neely says, you will really have to be trying to OD your dog on liver, okay? Now, um, our daughter who's a vet did have someone come in, dog in unbelievable horrible shape losing its hair looks terrible what are you feeding i'm feeding a raw diet tell me about your raw diet straight liver <laughs> what okay no that doesn't work all right so you can mix your blends you can add some organs you can add straight green tripe i did have someone call me at night uh angela and Angela opened up a new batch of Wolf Brown Plus, and she said, oh, my gosh, smells like dog poop. I said, yeah, good stuff, huh? So sometimes the tripe will have a really pungent smell to it, uh, and sometimes it won't. Um, tripe is calcium phosphorus balance. It's omega-3 and omega-6 rich, and it stinks. Uh, sometimes you're going to have a batch that smells more pungent than the other. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Um, you know, we always look, raw food doesn't smell great. Doesn't smell great. I miss raw food. Um, and, you know, I, I see all these blogs out there and they're like, if it smells bad, trust it. Don't feed it to your dog. And yet I was reading in Dr. Billingshurst, Billinghurst's book, Give a Dog a Bone. And he was saying, you know where your best pro probiotics come from? Sheep poop, sheep poop. All right, so if your best probiotics and some of the healthiest dogs that eat sheep poop uh, is good, but we don't want to give it to them because it messes with our olfactory. Doesn't make any sense. Um, anyway, my, my point is, is that sometimes it does stink. Um, doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with it, okay? All right, uh, you can add organs, you can add green tripe, you can mix your blends. How often should you rotate? Well, I rotate just darn near every chub. Um, how quickly you rotate really doesn't matter. Where it matters is if you leave your dog on the same proteins for long periods of time, okay? And what I mean by that is, Neely would say, our top nutritionist would say, don't go longer than a week on one. Okay, don't go longer than a week on one protein. There are other people that will go three months. Um, here is 
what you're going for in the raw diet? Aren't you going for complete and balanced? God, I hate that word, complete and balanced, because it's such a misnomer. But that's what everybody is going for. But if I eat McDonald's, well, it wouldn't be very nutritious to start with. But let's just say, well, let's just say I ate a, a burrito bowl without the flour uh, from Chipotle every single day of my life. Probably not going to be an overall balanced diet, right? Same thing with the dog. And they get tired of stuff and they, they um, you know, they get a certain vitamin mineral uh, fill <laughs> with one item. And sometimes they can develop food sensitivities. Um, so you want to get as many proteins in their body as possible. No, it's not going to bother their stomachs. Uh, once you get going on the raw diet, um, they're going to be fine. Now, can there be situations where they, they will throw up? I would tell you that tubulins, all right, that I get uh, calls about dogs throwing up. I'm going to tell you why. One is rabbit and tripe, okay? Um, rabbit and tripe has fur in it. It's the head of the rabbit. Um, it's got fur in it. And that is great for manganese, great for ligament and uh, the CCL uh, area and all of the, I mean, fur is great. You can't really get that in a lot of places. But it does cause some dogs to regurgitate their food. They're not sick. And I want you guys to really understand this. Just because the dog throws up doesn't mean they're sick. They're just getting something out of their body. My youngest German cannot, for some reason, at this moment in time, now I've only had her less than uh, four months, okay? And she was kibble fed from her, um, her other pet parent before I got her. But um, she will throw up the rabbit and tripe. Asta, my 11-year-old, nothing bothers that dog except really, really, really cold food. Like when I throw snowballs, she has gotten, I guess, in her old age where she just throws that up. Sometimes if she eats frozen duck feet or frozen sardines, she's going to throw that up. But she's going to go back and eat it, okay? So it's just because it's cold. Um, but I will say the rabbit and tripe can be a culture culprit for some dogs. Neely has six dogs. One of her dogs uh, doesn't do well on the rabbit and tripe, meaning that, you know, he just throws it up. The other one is high fat, the beginner's choice. I wish that was not the name on that blend because it is not the choice for somebody who's just starting out on the raw diet. Uh, that beginner's choice has tripe, it has fish in it, it has beef. It is a high fat. Now, I don't mind high fat in the diet if it's rotated in sparingly. If we have dogs that need to keep weight on, um, or we have dogs that are SAR dogs, they're out there tracking, search and rescue. We got big working dogs, uh, dogs that go running with their owners. They can use that higher fat. But what gives when you feed a higher pat, fat is the protein level. And your vitamins, your sulfur amino acids, the things that dogs create like tarring for their heart are being pulled out of the protein with amino acid cysteine and methionine. Um, so I've had some pet parents in the past where they, I, I understand it can be a financial um, obligation. It can be a financial thing for you in the broad diet. But they, they thought, well, if I feed this higher fat blend, I can feed less and therefore save money. And then the dogs weren't doing so good you know, in a couple of months, and they will start throwing up if the fat is too high, or you've been feeding it too long. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. But I don't have any problem with the higher fat, and especially if it's a cancer dog, those cancer dogs are going to be recommended to go to a higher fat. But um, again, let's don't use those high fat on a consistent basis. You're going to have to do something that's a little bit normal fat. If you are a new feeder, one thing that we do always recommend is healthy gut. Okay. Healthy gut helps with those digestive enzymes, helps turn them on, helps your dog be able to get through that transition period. It's a 
jar just about this big. It's not very expensive. Once you get through it, you don't have to keep doing it, okay? But that is something that is great for beginners. One thing that I wanted to tell you about uh, real quick is fish. All right, so when I'm talking about putting as many different proteins in your dog's body as possible, fish is one of those things. We have two different sizes of fish. This is a mackerel, okay? Mackerel. That's probably going to be, I'll just tell you what size that is. That fish is going to be, what's your guess on that? How many ounces do you think that is right there? That is seven and a half ounces of fish. So my German, my oldest German, this would be her entire meal, okay? And what I've done is I just put it in some water, okay? So it's very, like I could break it in half or I could chop it in half, you know? You can take some scissors and cut it up. But my dogs pretty much enjoy just, you know, going to town on them. But look, you can cut them up if you want. See, super, super easy. You can cut the tails, you can cut the heads. Um, that is a mackerel. That's the size of the mackerel. Holy mackerel! All right, then I want to show you the size of sardines. All right, sardines come in a bag, a five pound bag. Oop, I lost the fish in the floor. Let me grab it. Hang on. Don't want a fish going under. All right, so look, see this, these mackerel? I mean, these are sardines. That weighs two ounces. All right, some of these sardines are going to weigh, you know, more than that. So, some are two, some are one. So the other day, Lazi had a fish meal. And when I say fish meal, I mean this. And she eats a pound a meal. So I had, she probably had eight or 10 of these. And you can feed them frozen. I tend to like to thaw them out. Okay. But that's how you do fish meals. Now people ask me all the time, can they eat the bones? Well, heck yes. Those bones, it's not going to hurt your dog. Have you looked in your dog's mouth lately? Have you seen those teeth? Meant for bones, ripping, shredding, and tearing. No, these bones are not going to rip up their insides. Good night. Let your dog be a dog. Come on. How would they live if they didn't have you? Train them to be out there on their own. All right? So that's fish. Entire fish meal. How many fish meals do you want to have a week? And why do you want to do fish in the first place? Well, fish meals, I would do three full fish meals a week. So maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning is fish for you. Maybe it's that night. Can you feed more than that? Of course. It's all about bowel tolerance. What is bowel tolerance? Is it too much fish and are the poops loose? And if it is, just pull back a little bit. Okay. Um, fish, amazing omega-3s. Omega-3s is what you need in the diet. And that is part of the food. All right, so um, omega-3s and vitamin D. One thing that we see is that dogs tend to be deficient in vitamin D. Uh, they cannot get the vitamin D from the sun like we do because why? They have fur. Um, so they have to eat animals that are out in the sun. Fish has a lot of vitamin D, real vitamin D, okay? Not toxic synthetic vitamin D that we saw in hills um, where they had the recall. So that is fish. That's how you want to do fish. Super easy. Weigh it out. Thaw it out. Weigh it out. Take them outside and feed them because guts are going to, heads go one way, tails go another, and guts go everywhere. Then they'll clean it up. Now, if your dog is one that says, uh-uh, no way, I'm not eating fish. I don't eat anything that looks at me. Uh, well, we've got a solution for you. It's called phytoplankton. It's called phytosynergy on my website. This stuff is fabulous, one of my favorite products ever because it has a lot of vitamins and minerals. It smells like wheatgrass, it smells so good. Um, but it is, they get this little scoop with it, you guys. It's just a little green powder. But this is the where the fish get their omega-3s off the ocean floor. You just put that right in their food. That stuff is amazing. So if your dogs don't like fish, phytoplankton. Do I suggest fish oil? Well, that'd be a big no. I do not. Why? Process, goes rancid really fast, releases free radicals, does everything that we're trying not to do. So we do not like any of those oils, okay? 
Now, bones. Oh my gosh, bones and treats. We gotta cover that real quick. All right, I wanna show you a great bone. A great bone is what? It's a duck head. Now, he has a tongue in there. He has a little tongue. I've been thawing him out. But look, he's a real head. He's a duck head. He's got his eyes. That's organs. He's got his little brains in there. I don't know how big his brains are, but I don't know. I don't know if ducks are very smart. Well, it's really sad to say, but anyway, it's a duck head. Um, my dogs love these. Super malleable. Crunch, 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 done. All right. So you got duck feet, you got chicken feet, you got duck heads, you got turkey necks, all of those. Let me tell you, if it's in the fowl category, if it flies, it's soft. Okay? If it flies, it's soft. The next soft category of bones is going to be in the beef category. These are beef neck bones. Beef neck bones. Take a look at that. Raw meaty bones. How many bones can you give a dog a week? Well, if you can't poop, you're giving him too much bone. <laughs> you make it really complicated sometimes. It's not that complicated. It's real food. It would be different if it was kibble. Ugh. You know, kibble has a lot of a lot of bad stuff in it. Okay. All right. So those are beef neck bones and my dogs will eat those whole your hardest bones are going to be in the bison category in the bison category puppies they do great on those bison why because they haven't they they still have their puppy teeth and they can just gnaw on those and they're not going to consume those so your duck heads your duck feet your um your um beef neck bones all of those are called consumable because they can break those off and absolutely eat them. Also, new feeders, I want to tell you this. Treats matter. Treats absolutely matter. That's why we have air-dried treats here at Raw Dog Food and Company. What I mean by that is I see people that do a great raw diet, right? They're doing everything right. They're rotating. They're doing the 80-10-10. They're giving bones. They're giving extra organs. Maybe they're throwing some bison testicles in there. They're doing all sorts of great stuff. And then they give them crappy treats. What are crappy treats? Well, all you got to do is turn the bag around. Does it say beef lung plus, 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 plus? That's a no-no. We don't want processed stuff. We don't want added things to our treats because treats matter. So you're, let's say you're on a gluten-free diet, right? You're doing everything right. You're gluten-free, uh, but you decide I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat that gluten-filled treat over there and you are sitting on the potty for days or you get a stomach ache same thing with your dog don't be messing up the diet with bad treats all right air dried treats that means they have not been processed nothing's been put in them they are not shot with uh radiation so when you see bully sticks sitting in a a a bin in your pet food store those have to have Something shot on them to give them shelf life. Now, these just came out of the freezer. I keep mine in the freezer until they are used or in the refrigerator, okay? Because these are raw. Um, these are cow penises. These are bully sticks, okay? Then we have air-dried duck feet. And they really are duck feet, you guys. And they're air-dried, all right? We also have chicken tenders. These are all air dried. Um, we have the liver treats. We have the tripe chip. And then we have beef lung treats. These are great training treats. And I'll show you why. Because they break apart. Super easy. Okay. They're amazing. Our dogs love these. These are beef lung treats. So make sure that you don't mess up a diet with crappy treats. All right. So that's that. I went over that healthy gut. I told you about the phytoplankton. Um, I want to say that green eggs is a wonderful supplement for joint mobility. It also has green lipid muscles in there. You guys go on the, the supplement site. All of our supplements, they're no, no, we don't do pharmaceuticals. No pharmaceuticals. These are all homeopathic, professional grade, um, clean, clean, clean. The newest ones that we have in, 
because Dr. Jasek and I talk about this all the time, flea and tick, uh, I don't do that at all. So we have this product, is essential oils, it's called Flea Flicker. Flea Flicker. It smells just like a spa. So great, I might just spray my husband with that. No, I know what I'll spray him with, it's chill out. This stuff's called chill out. It smells like a spa. So if you've got a dog that's anxious, you want some chill out, um, you spray this in their bedding and it has that lavender smell and it smells really great. So we've got this. These are essential oils made for dogs, mostly used in the um, holistic veterinary world. And then if you like to brush your dog's teeth, we've got your Blue Toes Yummy Gum Brush. Okay, comes. I'll show you what it looks like. Essential oil, has a little brush on it, just like this. And brush your little dog's teeth. Now I had a question that came in tonight, said, I'm feeding my dog a raw diet, and I'm uh, and 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 his breath is bad. His breath is stinky. Well, here's what I would say: Let's have those teeth checked. Okay. Now I don't really know. Uh, I didn't ask, unfortunately, how old your dog was. My dogs don't have bad breath. Okay. Um, but we know that if there's bad breath going on, there could be bad teeth. And if your dog has bad teeth, that can be another reason that they pull away from really, really cold food. Um, so one of our veteran feeders said to me the other night, the best bone for cleaning dog's teeth is the bison patella, which is the bison kneecap. And her dogs just chew on that and it cleans that gum line. You know, one of the biggest myths about kibble is that it cleans teeth. I actually heard a vet on TV say that. And I thought, where have you been? Have you looked in the dog's mouth after it eats kibble? Mm-mm, not pretty. Smells really bad. But get to do a lot of dental work on dogs with eating kibble. But that kibble stays right in the gum line. That's like me eating a bag of, you know, or, or, or eating uh, uh, crackers. Eating crackers all day long, never brushing my teeth. Not going to be good. So I would say if your dog has bad breath, Let's check those teeth. Oh, another question that comes in. People will call me almost angry and they say, what is this label? What is this label on this food? It says for intermittent and supplemental feeding only. I thought this was a complete diet. And I say, well, I'm going to have to have you read that on our facts page because the explanation for that is quite extensive. But when you have a raw food, real food, where zinc is available, you darn sure don't want to be adding anything to it or you're going to over supplement the dog. That is why we have for supplemental feeding only. It has nothing to do with whether there are vitamins and minerals and complete and balanced and all that jazz. But it's a very uh, detailed explanation. On the facts page, it says, why do the labels say for supplemental feeding only? Remember, guys, this is real food. Real food <laughs> doesn't cause issues. Real food still has, imagine this, real food actually has real vitamins and minerals in it. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it. Dogs that can't heal, they may be eating that HPP stuff. They come over and start eating a raw diet, start healing, all right? Remember that it's just a slight tweak in the raw diet, okay? If the poops are too loose, it's a slight tweak. Maybe you're adding too much tripe. Um, poops are too hard. We already talked about that. If you're mixing kibble and raw, well, first of all, stop it. Stop, stop, stop. Stop it. The better your dog's gut health is, the less you're going to have issues with allergies. The better gut health your dog has, the less issues you're going to have with allergies. So if you assault that gut with toxic loads, vaccines, over-vaccinating, running and getting an antibiotic for every little itty-bitty thing, um, doing a lot of different medications, your flea and tick, your heartworm, you may never get on top of allergies. What we do know is that a dog that appears to be allergic to every protein most likely has leaky gut. And in that case, we're going to 
put you on the leaky gut protocol, which was in Yappy Hour tonight. It's a five step process. Um, but we got to get that gut healed. Um, I had someone the other day who said, Hey, um, I've got a friend who uses your food. Her dog's doing great. My dog's not doing well, but my vet said, never ever, you know, feed raw. What do you say? And I say, well, friends don't let friends feed kibble. And I say, get a different vet. If you have friends that are on the fence, you know, don't argue with them. Don't make an enemy out of them. Don't tell people their dogs are fat. Don't tell them that they're killing their dogs because they won't be your friends very long. Uh, just send them over to the Raw Dog Food Truth podcast because um, pretty soon if they're on kibble very long, they're probably going to have some issues. All right, everybody, I appreciate you more than you know. Thank you for being awesome. And remember, your pet's health is our business. And here at Raw Dog Food and Company, friends, don't let friends feed kibble. Yeah.